So for the first time following the FDA's announcement in September, a paper showed that, oh, Xanax is actually addictive for rodents. Hello friends, welcome to another episode of BioNews. Today I have four papers to tell you guys about and they involve the subjects of pain, uh, opioids and addiction. Beginning with the subject of opioids, a paper by Lang et al. was fascinating. It studied the subject of our subjective experience of the enjoyment of music. They wanted to know, does our enjoyment of music depend at all on opiate receptor activity in the body? You see, we have opiate drugs like oxycodone and fentanyl and these drugs that everybody knows about, but we also have molecules in our body that naturally agonize the receptors that are the targets of those drugs. These molecules are called endorphins, and they're famously released, for example, after you work out. So what this paper sought to determine was, are these, is the activity at these receptors necessary for our enjoyment of, the, of music? What they did was they did a placebo-controlled study of humans in which they gave a group vitamin D and another group naltrexone. Naltrexone is an opiate receptor antagonist of all the opiate receptors. They gave them 50 milligrams, which is enough to block all the opiate receptors, and then they played music for them and measured their pupil diameters and so on and saw how they responded to music. What they found was that blocking the opiate receptors limited the height of the sensation of pleasure from uh, music. So specifically it limited what they call the chills, the bodily chills that people get from the enjoyment of music. But it didn't completely inhibit the enjoyment of music. So the opiate system is involved in our enjoyment of music, but not crucial to it. Uh, a second paper by Martinez et al. In this paper, uh, so this paper was a paper in which they tried to study um, uh, well, they tried to study, they tried to learn whether some tools could inhibit neuropathic pain. And so what they did was, just for you guys to know, neuropathic pain is a kind of neurological pain, which is not easily treated by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, nor is it easily treated by opiates. It's traditionally treated by tricyclic antidepressants, SSRIs, and GABAergic medications, in particular gabapentin and pregabalin. So, the, uh, and often neuropathic pain comes from the actual treatment of, uh, from medicinal treatment. In fact, what they call this is iatrogenesis. And something is iatrogenic if it's a drug that, or a medicine that its treatment can actually cause a disease. So antiviral and anti-tumor drugs can sometimes cause neuropathic pain, limiting their, efficacy, their uh, ability to use those drugs. And also, there's a theory of neuropathic pain in which it's thought that neuropathic pain occurs due to hyperexcitability of the nervous system that is not inhibited and that then causes an inflammatory response from the immune system that to deal with that hyperexcitability. So in this uh, study, they used this model in an in vitro study. They uh, specifically gave, uh, uh, applied antiviral and anti-tumor drugs and watched neurites uh, shorten or uh, shorten meaning, basically they watched neurons neurodegenerate. And they saw that they could inhibit the effect of the neurodegeneration with the use of, uh, the use of uh, alpha lipoic acid, which is a free radical scavenger, with the use of a pregabalin, which is a GABAergic drug, and they theorized, by the way, that pregabalin was doing this by modulating calcium channels. And just so you know, in anti-epileptic medications, uh, one of the main drug targets of that is the calcium channels because epileptics have uh, GABAergic deficiencies or glutamatergic, too much glutamate, so or glutamatergic activity. So the problem is you can't usually just keep, uh, sorry for this, <laughs> you can't usually just keep inhibiting uh, GABA or keep increasing GABA because of tachyphylaxis and so on. So they usually modulate glutamate and one of the main targets there is calcium channels. So they found that uh, Pregabalin was able to also uh, limit the neuride shortening and melatonin was able to do the same via the melatonin 1 receptor. In a paper by uh, Balog et al., this paper was also about uh, a neuropathic pain and it summarized the role of the renin angiotensin system, also called RAS, in neuropathic pain. Remember, the renin angiotensin system is the system most involved in hypertension or the tension in our blood vessels and the retention of minerals and so on. So what they found, what they uh, summarized, this is a review paper, but what they summarized was that 81 receptor, just so you guys know, um, remember blood pressure medications, 
The two main ones that I use today are ACE inhibitors and ARBs, which is what I use, ARBs. ARBs block a receptor called AT1. ACE inhibitors block a molecule, block the synthesis of a molecule that agonizes both AT1 and AT2. So when you use an ARB, you block AT1, allowing more AT2 agonism. But when you use an ACE inhibitor, you block both. Okay, with that in mind, AT1, blockade of AT1 is analgesic and reduces neuropathic pain across all animal models. Um, on the other hand, with AT2, the authors basically uh, synopsize the decision as this. If the patient cares about neurogenesis or the protection of neurons, then they would want to not block AT2. In fact, they would want to agonize AT2 because AT2 is particularly neuroprotective. One of the reasons I use an ARB, because when you use an ARB, it increases AT2 signaling. But they said if you wanted just analgesia, you, an, uh, analgesia sorry, you would also block AT2 because AT2 uh, signaling is also involved, it seems, in neuropathic pain. Fascinating. So this means if somebody has neuropathic pain and they're taking an ARB, they may want to switch over to an ACE inhibitor, uh, something that I certainly didn't know before. Uh, finally, a paper by Mofet et al. So this paper uh, follows the September 20, uh, 23, 2020, very recent FDA announcement, finally, for a warning label on all benzodiazepine medications in the US the warning label says uh, to address the serious risk of abuse, addiction, physical dependence, and withdrawal reactions, the US FDA is requiring the boxed warning be updated for all benzodiazepine med medicines. This is their announcement, sorry. But anyway, so they announced this in September. This paper was the first, the paper I'm quoting by Mofet et al., which was recently published, is the first paper in history to show that Xanax induced positive place preference in male rodents, which is means which means basically positive place preference is the traditional test in rodents of addictive qualities of a drug. So for the first time following the FDA's announcement in September, a paper showed that oh Xanax is actually addictive for rodents. So anyway guys, I hope to see you soon and have a good day.